In this episode of Weekly Poker Hand, we are playing a million dollars deep on Hustler Casino Live at 500, 1,000 with a $2,000 big blind ante. Tom Dwan raises it up in the cutoff with Jack of Spades, 10 of Hearts to $3,000. Doug Polk on the button, three bets to $10,000 with the eight, seven of spades. Back around to Tom Dwan. He opts to call. If he wanted to play kind of nitty, he could fold, but that's not how they play on Hustler Casino Live. Tom calls. Let's head to the flop. But then when you ask people, explain to me why this is ugly, it's difficult. It's like, oh, cause um, it's like it's too close to the edge and it's like a, some visually less appealing. The flop comes ace of spades, 10 of clubs, five of diamonds. Tom has second pair. Doug has a few backdoor draws. Tom checks as he will do with his entire range in this scenario. And Doug Polk lets it go check, check. This is certainly a spot where he could just make a total bluff at this flop, given he does have some backdoor draws. But, you know, checking's fine, too, with the eight high. Let's head to the turn. I mean, it was yeah, like 85, 85, 90% of people all thought it was, it was the worst one. Uh, no, because we ordered them. It wasn't a mistake. It was just a non-poker a non player person was like, oh, these are cool. But poker players are very specific with what they like. Especially at the cards, you don't want to look at them and be confused and be able to tell what's going on. I hate when I need to double check. The turn is the ace of clubs. Tom continues checking, which makes a whole lot of sense with his very clear marginal made hand. And then Doug decides to bet 17000 into the $23,000 pot with just the eight high. So you may ask, why would he possibly do this? Well, if you consider the hands that would likely bet the flop as a bluff, a lot of those are going to be gut shot straight draws, like perhaps Queen Jack or King Jack, or slightly better backdoor draws like Jack Nine of Clubs. So when it goes check, check, Doug really doesn't have a whole lot of total trash in his range. So some of those total trash hands are going to become reasonable bluffing candidates on the turn. Also, he has a lot of value bets that certainly don't mind betting the turn and the river at this point like Doug's marginal made hands on the flop, such as ace two, which just made trips, or pocket kings, or pocket jacks, or king 10. All these hands would very likely check it back on the flop because they don't want to bet and get raised, but now once another ace comes on the turn and Tom checks, they're very likely to be good and can extract value from worse made hands. So this is a spot where I think Doug's going to be betting with a lot of hands like pocket jacks, and also some total air balls like the eight seven of spades. He goes 17,000. Tom Dwan with his very clear medium strength hand as an easy call. Let's go to the river. I did say I need like 29 more of those to get even. Maybe you're trying to help me out. The river is the five of spades, putting two aces, two fives, and a 10 on the board. Tom checks. Doug goes for about a half pot bet, 32,000 with his absolute nothing. I love this bluff in this scenario. If Doug did have a hand like random king high, he probably doesn't need to bluff that. If he had a hand like pocket sixes, doesn't want to value bet that. So this is a spot where I think Doug's going to be value betting a decent 10 or better. I think he expects Tom to have a whole lot of king high type hands and under pairs to the 10. Um, so I think any 10 or better can reasonably go for value and he needs to find some bluffs. And like I said, on the turn, he doesn't really have a ton of bluffs. And at this point, you want to bet the bluffs that can get slightly better hands to fold, such as Tom's random king high or queen high. Perhaps it had a flush draw. So 
Doug does go for the half pot bet as he would do with his medium strength hands like pocket jacks that are going for value or a 10 that's going for value. So puts Tom in a tough spot with his random king high and his random under pairs. Let's see how Tom feels about this with a 10. It would have been 28. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing my job here, man. I did my part. I thought we do the thing. I love you. You call. We all laugh. It's <laughs> our thing. I mean, such a hero fold. Oh, do you hate to hear it? <laughs> <laughs> you hate to hear it. Oh. What did you, did you call the 10? After a bit of thought, Tom Dwan folds the Jack 10 to just a half pot bet. I cannot fathom this fold. I did not expect this fold. I thought this would be a pretty easy call because I would think one of this is the uh, this is one of the best hands in Tom's range. But Tom decided to knit it up somehow. What I want to know is, do you think Doug's friendly, cheerful attitude at the start of this hand influenced Tom's decision on the river? Let me know in the comment section down below. And I'll be right back to give you my thoughts. While you're down there, click the like and subscribe button. I definitely think the cheerful, jovial talk impacted Tom's play in this situation. But I also think the fact that Doug played this hand exactly like he would play a hand such as King 10 or Pocket Jacks influenced Tom's fold. That said, I think when you're playing against a good, strong GTO player like Doug Polk, you just have to really, really, really lean on GTO strategies and not so much on reads, right? Because Doug is the type of player who will find bluffs in all scenarios. If there is a poker player at the table who you can expect to find good logical bluffs to include in their river betting range along with their medium strength value hands, it is Doug. So if you have a hand that blocks his medium strength value hands and even perhaps beats some of them, like Jack-10 that blocks King-10, Queen-10, and pocket jacks, I think you just have to find the call. That's it for this video. When you block the value hands, you beat some value hands, and you crush the bluffs, don't fold. <laughs>